Uh, welcome to this session. I am Satish Agnihotri, head of the Center for Technology Alternative for Rural Areas, Sitara, and today we will talk about uh, mapping inequalities. This is a session on where does the shoe pinch. Now you might wonder what does this title convey. What I will try to show you during this lecture is that data about anything tells you whether the shoe pinches. That means do we have high poverty in this particular state? Do we have low literacy? Do we have high population density? Is it is a place more urbanized, less urbanized? So, data will tell you whether the shoe pinches. Map actually tells you where does the shoe pinch. So, you, when you look at maps, it gives you clusters of pockets of performance and non-performance. Take any social indicator and you will see this to be the case. And as they say, a picture speaks more than 1000 words. Map is essentially a picture. So, we can expect it to speak more than 1000 words. How do we go about tracing these inequalities? Let us have a look at it and we will use the data of census 2011 and there is an excellent site called census GIS India which has been put up with the help of the registrar general's office and that will show you how to trace various inequalities in the country. So, if you are ready let us go to the census GIS site. It is easy first you will go to censusgis.org India you are able to see it on your screen. This actually comes from another site which is called Trends India, trendsindia.org and within trendsindia.org if you go you get a site census GIS 2011 which is here. You can independently go to this site as well. Now, let me forewarn you, you will get a pop up block. So, when you get that block, you will have to remove the block and say allow this site, right. Only then you will be able to proceed. Now, let us go to India. So, it shows you a map of India and you can go to any state, it tells you this is the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now, again uh, let me put the caveat since this is 2011 map, we do not have separate Andhra and separate Telangana. So, the, for that you probably have to wait for 2021 census. There are other surveys where Telangana and Andhra have been separated. You get uh, you go wherever. So, it tells you the how your country is located. You have Kerala over here, but you can also go to a district level. So, it will give you the maps of districts. So, you can figure out for example, as to which is this district is Adilabad in Andhra. You can surf around and find out where various districts at various places. So, you can go to Bihar, you can go to uh, Karnataka, you can go to Tamil Nadu wherever you wish. Okay? So, let us remove this district layer and just ask ourselves what is the information that this map contains. So, you will have to go to query. If you go to query, it gives you data from census which is two types. One is demographic and other is house listing which basically talks you about various uh, infrastructural facilities. So, let us see for example, what does the demographic data give us. It tells you the population, it also tells you the child population. Now, what is, what is the importance of child population? If the child population accounts for a much larger part of the overall population, then you can expect that the small family norm has gone for the toss. But if child population accounts for a smaller percentage of the total population, you have a smaller family norm coming in. 
you also have the population of the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe in any given state or a district. You also have percentage urban population. So, you, you can figure out uh, urbanization. Now, let, let us take a look at what it does. So, if I click on urbanization, it tells me what is the percentage of urban population. And if you go over here, there is an icon which has sign of greater than equal to less than equal to, it is interactive you can handle that. So, we want to find out which are the places which are heavily urbanized. So, let us make a guess, do we have places where more than 60 percent population is urban? Let us let us check and we say execute query. So, it executes a query, here you get a list as well. So, you find out it is Chandigarh, Daman and Dev, Goa interestingly is the most urbanized national territory of Delhi, that national capital territory obviously will be heavily urbanized. So, states are not as urbanized as we think. So, let us go down to are there any states where more than 40 percent population is urban. So, let us check this. So, yes you find this is Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and interestingly Mizoram over here fairly urbanized. Okay. You take it to say 35 percent, okay. you still do not have AP is not as urbanized, but if I go let us say to 33 percent there is nothing sacrosanct about 5 or 0, you can have intermediate numbers as well. So, I go and execute query. So, you see a neat cluster over here of urbanized states, you have a patch over here which will obviously be Punjab and Haryana and you have Mizoram over here. What happens if you want to go to a district level? Let us let us take a quick look at it and ask ourselves as to which districts are very urbanized. So, we will say okay, let us see which districts are more than 50 percent population which is urban. Let us see. So, we just get few. So, you realize that urbanization is not that heavy, but then if you reduce the range and say 40 percent find out and if you go let us say quickly to 30 percent, because if you remember we had put a cut off of 33, then you will find fair amount of urbanization in various places. Okay. Now, let us let us take a slightly different parameter. So, but first let us see in demographic what are the other parameters we are having, percentage of population, percentage of scheduled caste and percentage of scheduled tribe population. Now, this is important because the tribal population and their percentage are two different ball games. So, let us pause and ask ourselves which are the places where tribals are concentrated okay? and we will go to rural areas. So, we will say percentage of tribal population in rural areas and do we really have places where more than half the population is tribal, unlikely, but let us check. Yes, you are getting in the northeastern states, you are getting a belt over here. If you reduce it to let us say 40 percent, so you get a neat belt where the tribal population is concentrated, and I can just be a little adventurous and make it 33 percent in rural areas. So, you get a block of districts where you have more than one third population which is tribal. This is interesting. Does the same thing happen for let us say scheduled castes? Let us see. So, let us see again stick to rural and let us ask are there areas where you have more than 33 percent scheduled castes. You incidentally get Punjab. Now, a lot of people get a little surprise at this pattern, but 
if you go to let us say 20 percent, so what you realize is tribals are usually concentrated in a particular belt whereas when it comes to scheduled caste population it is scattered all over uh, and the percentages are not so high. So, the clusters here that you get are relatively less. Let us go to a completely different angle that is the housing. In housing what does this give me? It gives me source of drinking water, it gives me source of lighting, it gives me availability of sanitation facility latrines. Now, this is a 2011 picture, it may change now with Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. It also gives you percentage night soil disposal, it gives you fuel use for cooking, we will look at it in little more detail. It also gives you percentage availability of assets. Now, this is interesting, let, let us see what does this percent availability of assets. It actually tells you about the households which have radios, television, computer with internet, without internet. Obviously, in 2011 the internet penetration would be very less. It also tells you four wheelers, two wheelers, bicycles, but it also shows you houses which have no assets. So, you may have households in your country which are without all these assets which we take for granted in, in our day to day life. Okay. Let us ask ourselves in India, in rural. So, India that is not Bharat is a different thing and we are looking at Bharat right now. Do we have households where more than say one fifth population, so more than 20 percent households have no assets. There is a fairly large portion. So, let us go down to 25 percent, maybe 20 is a little too uncharitable. This is it and if you say show me the districts where more than one third households do not have assets. Are you seeing the familiar tribal belt? It is not a coincidence, let me assure you. Now, with this we will take a pause and then we will go to something like electricity and its availability in our country.